you're thinking of moving to Phoenix, but before you do, you really want to know all the bad parts about living in Phoenix. You want the cons, the nitty gritty, and that is exactly what we are going to cover in this video. We're going to talk about all the downsides of Phoenix and kind of the parts that suck about it. This is not a sugarcoat video. I hate sugarcoating, so we are not going to like spin it and make it like, oh, secretly it's a pro or it's a plus. Like, nope, there's things that straight up suck and we are going to be real open and honest about it. So without further ado, let's do this. Your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in phoenix arizona and all the surrounding areas then go ahead and subscribe and click that bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about what is happening in the phoenix market my name is samantha my team and i help people every single day just like you make their move to phoenix arizona and we absolutely love it so if you are thinking of making a move if you've got questions please reach out give us a call shoot us a text send us an email or schedule a zoom call with us all of that is linked in the description below we would love to hear from you we'd love to connect with you reach out we are here and happy to help whether you're making a move in nine days or nine months just reach out. We would love to make uh, your move out here nice and smooth and easy. So like I said, in this video, we are going to be covering 10 of the downsides of living in Phoenix. I'm just tripping over something there. Sorry. All right. 10 of the downsides of living in Phoenix. Uh, like I said, there are real, real negatives to it. Uh, obviously, like sunshine and heat is going to be like one of them as I'm like blinded trying to look into the camera right now. Uh, so there are definite uh, negatives and I really want to be open and honest even though I've lived here my whole life and I love this city there are things that really suck and that I hate about it and I think it's important that you guys know it so we're gonna head back to the office and go over this list of 10 things so let's do it Phoenix is definitely an incredible place to live and it has a lot to offer I've lived here my whole life born and raised I absolutely love the city but there are definitely some drawbacks and some negatives about living here for sure. So if you are thinking of moving to the Phoenix area, these are 10 things that you might want to know before moving here. So without further ado, let's start with the first one. First is obviously the weather. Now for spring, summer, and late fall, the weather is actually really nice. You can be outside, enjoy the sun. Uh, you can wear t-shirts on Christmas and stuff like that, all that good stuff. But in the summer, from about June to September, it is brutally hot. Like burn your hands off in your car, stay inside, avoid the sun, hot. Uh, people will say that is a dry heat, um, so it's not that bad. I call BS, 115 degrees is still 115 degrees. Like, yes, it is nice that it's not humid here, but it is still very, very hot. It's like walking into an oven when you open up your door in the middle of the summer. So if you are thinking of moving to Phoenix, you need to be aware of that. It is really, really hot in the summers. They are no joke. People will, you know, like the joke about like cooking an egg on the sidewalk or um, cooking like uh, cookies on a sheet on like the hood of your car when it's sitting out there in the summer. Um, that's not a joke here. I did that as a kid. That is an actual thing that you can do and it will cook. It is that hot. You'll see memes about people like putting pot holders on their hands so they can like hold their steering wheel and drive so they don't burn themselves in their car. So just be prepared. If you're not used to the heat, that is something that you should definitely know about before you move here. Another thing about Phoenix that's not so great, well, again, in my opinion, these are all opinions, uh, but that is there is a lot of cookie cutter neighborhoods. You're gonna see there's a lot of uh, gravel, there's a lot of desert landscaping and rock and cactus and stuff like that, because yes, we are a desert, and so it is more cost effective and saves on water to have that desert landscaping instead of grass and trees and stuff like that. But whenever I'm visiting friends or family or traveling to different parts of the country, I get a little jealous, like everything is so green and beautiful and stuff like that. There are definitely places like that here if you're looking um, for kind of more green California feel, like Gilbert and Chandler, um, even parts of uh, like kind of more south or central Scottsdale will have that feel. Um, but Phoenix in general, it's mostly kind of desert landscaping. Like I said, a lot of cookie cutter homes, um, especially kind of in the late 90s and early 2000s, you're going to see a lot of stucco, a lot of tile roofs and stuff like that. So if that's kind of not your vibe and not what you're looking for, again, there are some homes and communities that look different, but for the most part, that's the majority of the homes here in the Phoenix area. All right, number three, this is a big one, is our public transportation. It sucks. <laughs> like there's no, room, there's no other way around it. Our public transportation is really not up to par, uh, unfortunately. So there are a couple places where we've got uh, the light rail, which will run through parts of downtown Phoenix and parts of Tempe and stuff like that. So downtown Phoenix, Tempe, and Old Town Scottsdale are three parts of the city that are really walkable uh, and stuff like that. But for the rest of the Phoenix area and all the surrounding areas, the public transportation really is not that great. It's just kind of a bunch of buses 
that are not super on time, not super slow, and don't even go to all the areas that you might need to get to. So if you are thinking about moving to Phoenix, just be aware that public transportation is not super great. Most people who live here or move here have a vehicle because it's pretty spread out and you're gonna need a way to get to and from places. They do have Uber and Lyft, uh, but again, it can get pricey because you're gonna be traveling farther distances for the most part. Number four is car registration. So uh, I learned that it's actually a lot cheaper in different states. So if you're in a state where your car registration is cheap, uh, just beware, it's not super cheap here in Arizona. So you're gonna have to get your registration renewed every two years for your car, and it is going to be most likely several hundred dollars. So in Arizona, when they look at your registration, they are going to charge $2.80 on every $100 of assessed value for a car if it is new, and $2.89 on every $100 of assessed value of the car if it is a used vehicle. I know that's a lot of math, so we'll give you a quick example. So if you have a car that is valued at $30,000, uh, the registration fee for that car is gonna be around $167. Again, you've gotta pay that every two years to keep it renewed. So that is kind of a bummer is it is more expensive. Um, but the good news is they used a lot of that money to take care of the roads. Um, something I noticed in different places of the US outside of the Phoenix area is like the roads suck in a lot of places. In Phoenix, they are um, really nice asphalt. There's not a lot of potholes. It's really smooth. They're always redoing and repaving the roads. They're building lots of highways and stuff like that. So the roads here are super great, but you do have to pay for it. Uh, with that uh, car registration fee. Number five is like critters and bugs. And I hate like with a living passion, I hate bugs. Like I cannot do like spiders, scorpions, cockroaches, like mm -mm, no, no. Um, snakes I'm okay with, but I'd rather not see them in my house and stuff like that. So uh, bugs and critters definitely are here. Like scorpions are a real thing. You're gonna see like grasshoppers, ants, flies, all that stuff, snakes occasionally. But for the most part, uh, like things like snakes and scorpions, like people always freak out about those, but they're not typically in your home. They are gonna be out on the trail. So if you're doing a lot of hiking, especially if you're gonna take um, pets or kids out there, make sure they're not wandering off the trails, you know, stick to the trail and stuff like that. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. But for the most part, you're not gonna see them in your home. If you are living at the base of a mountain or sometimes uh, that if you're like kind of way out in some new development areas, you may see them occasionally, but there are a lot of kind of ways to get around that we have pest control services who like they deal with this stuff every single day so if you um, you know are really averse to like scorpions uh, snakes spiders kind of whatever it is you don't want they've got everything that you need you can actually get your home sealed uh, to make sure that you don't have any scorpions inside of your home and stuff like that so there are options but just even seeing them they are here and you see them occasionally and it's not something I'm a fan of. Another thing is there's not a ton of water and lakes and stuff like that. Like I keep saying, yes, Phoenix is a desert and I should have known, <laughs> it comes with the territory. Um, but there's not a ton of lakes and water. We do have a lot of, you know, man-made lakes and stuff like that. There's a lot of kind of little lakefront living, especially in places like Chandler and Gilbert and things like that. And we do have Lake Pleasant, which is like kind of one of the biggest lakes here. You can go in and do uh, lake life and stuff like that. It's up a kind of north, uh, past North Phoenix in the Peoria area. So if you want to do Lake Pleasant, you absolutely can. There's not just going to be like water everywhere and grass and trees everywhere. There are in a few parts of town, but for the most part, like I said, a lot of desert landscaping rocks. Number seven is the public school system. So if you've got kiddos or if schools are important to you, um, you know, this can be a, a big one. Even if it's not, keep watching. I promise there's a few more things <laughs> that are gonna be important. Uh, but if schools are important to you, that is something to kind of be aware of. The public schools in the Phoenix area are not the best and not the most highly rated. Now there are incredible schools, uh, public schools in Chandler and in Gilbert and in those areas as well. Uh, but if you are in the Phoenix area or any of the surrounding areas where the public school system might not be the best, they do have a lot of charter and private school options. Those are incredibly good, very highly rated and stuff like that, but the public school system uh, for the most part is not one of the best. That is definitely something to be aware of. One of the good things about schools in the Phoenix area is you will see uh, all the public schools are gated. Uh, for safety in the Phoenix area. So if kind of safety and all that stuff is important to you, that is something that Phoenix takes very seriously with their school systems. Okay, number eight is your electric bill in the summer. It sucks. <laughs> it's gonna be typically a big bill uh, because you are running that AC unit constantly in the summers. They are so hot and so it's just gonna be running nonstop through the summer months. So that is something to be aware of. Also, when you've got the uh, AC running, they a lot of condensation is created from it. And so just kind of to be aware of something that kind of sucks is since it does make a lot of condensation, it's got to have a pipe. 
to kind of get all that condensation out of there. If it's gonna be up in your attic, there is a pan for it. A lot of times it can um, overfill. You gotta make sure that the drainage from that pan is good, otherwise it's gonna overfill and it's gonna flood your attic and that's just gonna be like, a whole big thing. Um, or if it's on the roof, on the outside of your house, make sure that it drains off. A lot of times, uh, if it's not done correctly, it's gonna be on your roof and it's just gonna be leaking all of that condensation onto your roof, which is gonna potentially create rot or any other issues. So just be aware, in the summers, your electric bill is probably gonna be pretty high because you are running the AC. That is something I definitely don't like every time I see my bill in the summer. Oof, it hurts a little bit. <laughs> and um, dealing with any of kind of those flooding or issues, if it's not, properly, um, if it doesn't have the drainage and properly stalled for all that condensation. Number nine is the bad drivers. This is something we have started to get a bad rap for uh, recently, and it is no joke. Arizona drivers are not great. Uh, I am part of the problem, so I apologize, but people here like the speed limit is kind of like a suggestion. People go fast here. And since we have a lot of highways uh, that are really wide, lots of lanes, and unless it's uh, kind of like rush hour and stuff, traffic isn't that bad. So you can you can really book it on those highways. So um, people go really fast, including on the surface streets, not just the highways. So speeding is definitely an issue here. And people apparently don't know how to use their blinkers in, uh, in the Phoenix area. And so that is something to be aware of too. They are just gonna pull into your lane, no blinker, no warning. So be aware of that. And our very last point, number 10, is gonna be that it is just growing so fast. There is such a boom happening in Phoenix and all the areas around it, which is incredible. Growth and change is, you know, something that is really exciting, but it really has started to impact the affordability and the housing that is available here, which is kind of a bummer. So you're going to see the kind of lower price end for homes starting to go up and up and up. So there's not a lot of homes available under the 400,000 range and the ones that are available that are more uh, kind of affordable in that different price range, they are snapped up really quick. Like it is incredibly competitive trying to buy a home here in the Phoenix area at any price range, honestly. So if you are thinking of, whoa, okay, there was a cloud and now all of a sudden it's super sunny. Okay, <laughs> so if you are thinking of uh, purchasing a home in the Phoenix area, just be aware that it is very competitive. Cost of living is changing with all this growth and change. Uh, it is gonna affect kind of your bottom line and your dollars. So if you are looking to make a move to Phoenix, if you have questions, if you want help finding that perfect home, reach out. Our team would love to help. We are here to be a guide, to be a resource, to answer any questions that you have. We're not gonna try to convince you to buy a home or sell you anything. We are just here and happy to help. So reach out anytime, shoot us a text, give us a call, send us an email, schedule a Zoom call if you want. All of that is in the description below. So if you wanna connect with us, if you wanna uh, check out on Instagram what it's like living here in the Phoenix area, again, that's linked below. Below. There's free moving checklists and guides, uh, an Amazon list for all the moving tools that you need. Whatever we can do to help you make that move, let us know and we are happy to help. So reach out anytime, whether you're moving in nine days or nine months, our team is here and happy to help. And until next time, we'll see you soon.